page Ches. Chapter 4, Lekuti Amorim, Perek Dalit. Let's go. Zok Dal Terebe, in his Tanya Kadisha, many people called the Sefer, not just Tanya Hillel. In the Chabad and Lubavitch, you hear, it, you, hear, you hear it being called Tanya. But in other Kreisen, other communities, other Hasidic communities, they'll say Tanya Kadisha, the Holy Tanya. So just important to know that. Perek Dalit, chapter 4. The Oid, the Oid, in addition. So obviously with the first word of chapter 4, the Alter Rebbe right away says, Avram, that this chapter is a continuation of the previous chapter. So the previous chapter we learned about what's called the faculties of the soul, of the neshama, i.e., the seichel, the intellectual faculties, umidos, and the emotional faculties. The oid yesh lechol nefesh elikis. Additionally, each and every nefesh elikis has that every Jew has within him or her. Shleisha levushim, three garments. Literally, levushim means garments. A better word in English would be three instruments, three tools to facilitate. The intellect and the emotions. You can be very bright and you can be very emotional, but you need a way to implement them, to facilitate them. Without it, they go nowhere. And this too, we have in history and we have it today. Very bright people sometimes remain bright in their own home, in their own community, and no one knows about them, and they do very little with their brightness. And the same true with the emotional character, character traits that some people excel in, etc. If they're not facilitated, if they're not harnessed, and they're not used as a tool is used to bang the nail into the table to make the table, you get no table. You can have a good nail, you can have a good hammer, you can be strong to bang. You can understand where you're supposed to bang. But if you don't put the, na- the hammer to the nail on the table in the proper way that your mind tells you where to put it, you have nothing. Using that as an analogy, as a muscle, the al employs that to, to start discussing the instruments, the levushim. Let's continue. What are they? Shehem. Machshava diburu maisa. They are thought, speech, and action shall taryad mitzvahs of the with of the six hundred thirteen mitzvahs of the teira. So why Hillel does he say shall taryad mitzvahs of teira? Because we're talking about the nefesh kiss. We're not talking about the nefesh abamis. Later we'll talk about the nefesh abamis who has its instruments and tools. And it's not in Torah and Mitzvahs, it's in other materialistic, worldly passions and desires, which are of, of behemoth nature, of, of, of lust nature, etc. But here we're talking about the godly soul. What does the godly soul want? What does the godly soul want? Another plaque? A, another a few dollars? No, the godly soul wants God. What's God? For a Jew, right? We're talking about to a Yidir. Taito mitzvahs, i.e., the Alter Rebbe says, Machshova dibro maisa shall taryag mitzvahs ha And now he explains. Sheke'od mikayim b'maisa. When a person goes about fulfill through his actions, call mitzvahs maisis, all mitzvahs that are action-oriented, come. Over dibur, and when it comes to dibur speaking, who Isaac be pirush kol taryag mitzvahs v'hilchaseim, he speaks through his mouth about the explanation of all the six hundred and thirty mitzvahs and their laws. Kama, and finally over machshava, he uses his thought, who masik. He comprehends as much as he's able to comprehend the pardes, which means literally a garden, but it's an acronym for bipshat, pays of shat, remez is, is for remez, 
There's the literal meaning. There is the what it alludes to. Ramazim, drush is drusha sermonizing, etc., expounding. Medrash, soid is the esoteric, the Kabbalah, the secrets. So he he uses his machshav, his thought, to comprehend as much as he is able within those four ways of understanding Taita. And here it's worth noting that al Rebbe plans already the fourth chapter of Tanya to tell everyone that's learning the Tanya, my dear friends, there are four ways of learning Torah, and each is holy. And each one does not contradict the other. But, this he doesn't say here, when you're in the realm of Pshat, it's Pshat. When you're in the realm of Drush, it's Drush, Remez, Remez, and Said, Said. Don't mix apples and oranges. Is there a correlation? Yes, our Rebbe was a, an expert, and his father was an, a, an expert like showing the connection between a halachic decision in Pshat and Soid and Kabbalah. But that's, that's, uh, that's an exception, you know what I'm saying? The average person knows that there are four ways of understanding Torah, so the Alter Rebbe says. It's not enough to say, right here is sir, he's alluding to this, I'm going to only understand the Torah through the Gemara, through halacha. Sorry, my friend, that's only pshat. The Altarebbe rules in Hilchas Talmud Torah. Rebbe, I don't know if you know this, but he makes a psak din. The Rebbe always cited this, Yonison, that a person will have to come back again in Gilgal if he didn't, if he didn't learn, try learning all the four ways. Our Anashama needs for its shleimut, for its perfection and completion, to study all. Now, naturally, who can study every 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 aspect of Torah? We can't, but we have to attempt to. So, therefore, don't be scared of learning soid. Don't be scared of learning halacha and Muslim and drush. Invest in everything. But the Alter Rebbe, the interesting thing is that the Alter Rebbe says this as a psak din in Hilchas Talmud Torah. I'm, I'm not sure if others agree, write that. So it might be only a chiddush of the Alter Rebbe, but nevertheless, Alter Rebbe was a poisik in halacha. If you don't follow the Alter Rebbe, you don't follow his piski dinim. But uh, plenty of Yidin, not, not just Lubavitchers, do. So he passes that. Let me first take your innocent and then you, Hillel. Yes, your innocent. Yes. Right. And at a good Hasidic Fabring and at two, three in the morning after a few cups of the Chayim, you'll hear someone say, if you take the Soid out of the Samach, out of Pardes, you're left with the Yiddish word Fed, horse. You're a horse. I, I was just going to say that. that yes, Hilla. Uh, I, I was just going to say that I, I've seen that same uh, Klal brought in the name of the Arizal in the uh, in the writings of Kamar and Zita Chay. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah Dal Dal Tereba, I think quotes the Arizal, but the but the Chiddush Hilla is that he brings in Hilchas Talmud Torah as a psak din. The Kamarna and, and, and the Zidich Shaiva, it, it's not a Shulchan Aruch, you know what I'm saying? But to, to, that's the Chiddush. The Chiddush is to say that in Halacha, it becomes a din. That, that's an amazing, an amazing thing. <laughs> that was the Rebbe's argument to, to those that opposed Chassidus and didn't want to learn Chassidus, even, you know, uh, post, uh, you know, the Goin and all that, uh, you know what I'm saying? So they would argue, we don't pass him like the Alter Rebbe, I, I understand. You, you know, they pass him like the Shul, the Arach Shulchan, they pass him like the Mechaber, whatever, the Mishnah Bruder. I understand. But nevertheless, you can't just, you know, throw out Al Terebbe's words, like, you know, he's, it, it means nothing. You, you, you know, everyone, every Talmud Chachem, serious, from the biggest Litvak to the whatever, to the biggest Chosid, 
the Al Tarebbe's words are, are, are reckoned with. You understand? They're reckoned with. And the truth is that, <laughs> I don't want to go into this because this needs a Shia for itself. I once heard uh, Professor Broid, Broid and Michael Bro Brody, who, you know, whoever, what, he's a genius, you know, and the, in Atlanta once he gave a lecture Shabbos afternoon. I mean, I was floored. I mean, this, the, the, he explained the four Shulchan Oros, the Kafa Chaim for the Svardim, the Orach HaShulchan, the Mishnah Bruda, and the Alter Rebbe. It was fascinating. I couldn't take any notes. It was Shabbos, you know. So he gave us the historical background, and, and basically, you know, he said that the uh, the Mishnah Bruder only made it because the Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch wasn't around, and neither were the others. And he didn't, he didn't, and Chas Shalom say, you know, the Mishnah, Mishnah Bruder is, is, is a great, Gvaldik, it's Gainus. But nevertheless, Iyun, he said Iyun, depth, a word, one word that m makes such a difference in the entire Sugya, he says that's in the Balatanya Shulchan Aruch, in the Rav Shulchan Aruch. He said that. And everyone knows that. Everyone knows that that the, 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 that you, you understand. Chlal, when we when we talk about when we talk about uh, and things like that, the earlier you go back, the, the more validity we we've given to. So the Machaber lived five hundred years ago. Machaber, Shulchan Aruch. Then came the the, the, the explanations. There was the Kitzur Shulchan Aruch of Shleim Gansri, the Kafa Chayim. Then there was the Aruch Hashulchan, the Balat and, and the Balatanya was was um, Balatanya, right? And, and then the Mishnah Bruder. But but I remember I was sitting there and he's no Chassid, Michael Broy, Broy, the Broidy, whatever. He's no Chassid, far from it. But 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 he said, you know, the the the, the scholarship of the Alter Rebbe. In just one word is, is amazing. So that's why, even if you do not paskin like him, which plenty of people don't, probably the majority of of, of from people don't paskin like the Balatanya Shulchan Aruch. Nevertheless, it's not discounted. It, it, you have to reckon with it. And uh, therefore, when he, he says this, it's something to 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 think about. Let's go on. Hare klolis tariyag evori nafshay. Avi, we're on the fifth, sixth line. Had a in middle of the line. Had a is Tariyag Evori Nafshe, the overall 613 strands of one soul, Miluboshim Bitariyag Mitzvah are invested at the time when you speak, think about Taita within the 613 mitzvahs of the Taita. Here too, Isser, the Alter, the, the Alter Rebbe alludes to another idea, Taryag Evori Nafshay. What does that mean? The 613 limbs of the soul. What does that mean? The soul has limbs. <laughs> A body has limbs. The soul doesn't have limbs. So let's explain the Hasidus. What's the purpose of a limb? A communication between one part of the body and another part of the body. Or sometimes an expression of a certain part of the body within a limb. So, so too, the Taita has 613 ways that God's infinity, God's essence is expressed through 613 ways which are within the soul of every Jew. So every Jew possesses 613 different ways of expressing Taita. That's briefly the explanation of this. Oh, let's continue. Or the protos, and more specifically, Prinas Chabad Shebenavshoi, the Chabad within every Jew's soul, Chochma Binadas, the intellectual components, faculties, Mulubashois, they are enclosed, they're dressed up, Bahasogas Ataida, in comprehending Taida, Shuhu Masik. We, in which he uh, comprehends bipshat remesh drusos bepardes kifi choilus vasogis vasagos based on the amount of cap the capacity that he can understand, and then the Alter Rebbe adds three very important words, Chevra, v'shoyish nafshi lemaila, and the source of your nefesh in heaven. What does that mean? That means sometimes you're learning and you're harving and you're putting your mind to it, and it don't go. You don't get it. You know why? It could be your shadish nefesh, this is not for you. 
to understand fully. Don't ask me why. I don't know why. But the Alter Rebbe adds these words. He didn't have to add these words. He could say that, the, that when you invest your mind in, 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 into the 613, based on how much you can understand, fine. He adds, It also depends on your soul origin. Hillel, what's your soul origin? Don't know. Avi, what's, my, what's your soul? We don't know, right? But nevertheless, each and every one of us has a shaydish. And the shaydish, the point being here, Chavre, the point being, the shaydish yonisim impacts your capacity of understanding. So don't feel bad. I remember having a long conversation with Avi. Don't, don't feel bad you learn and you're learning and you're learning and you still can't learn like someone who learned in yeshiva for 10 years. Shaydish nafshe lamayla. If Hashem wants of your soul to come to that level of learning, you will come to it. In other words, there needs to be the opening from on high for your brain capacity to comprehend whatever you want to comprehend and you're not able to comprehend yet. And when and, and, when and if, you hear this? Yes, sir. When and if, your, shayda, your source of your neshama, Lamaila, has that, um, has that, has that in it, it will happen if you work hard and access it. But if you don't have it, it will never happen. And of course, you're probably asking, so how do I know? We don't. <laughs> Who says we have to know everything? We don't. We know we have to do. We have to hurry over. We have to try. Whether or not we will, you know, get to, but the fact is that there's other things that come into play. The gift, the gift, for example, that a God, as it says in chapter 14 later, impregnates a person with a certain soul called, you know, Ibor. You know, it could be that Hashem will impregnate you with someone else's soul who does understand and did understand Taita much greater and you and he'll put it insert it in your soul for a while, and all of a sudden you'll comprehend things that you never knew before, and then all of a sudden you go back to you, to yourself and you don't understand again deeper things. There are those things that happen too. So the bottom line is to go and search for these things is a waste of time. It's not a, a, a Torah Mahalach, it's not a Torah approach. Let's continue. Bahamida is so here, the Alter Rebbe finished talking about the instruments of Machshava, Dibur, and Maisa as they apply to Seichel. Now, he's going to talk about how they apply to Midas. The Midas, the emotions, which refer to awe and love, and their branches, the Tolda Seyen, and their offspring, the results of love and fear, Mulubashais are also invested Bikiyama mitzvis in the fulfillment of mitzvis, be Maisa Uva Dibur in action and in speech. What speech are we talking about? Shahu Talmud Taira, I'm referring to the learning of Taira, Shekineged Kulon, which which corresponds to all other mitzvis. Right? Talmud Taita connected Kula. Now the question is why? The first idea, Hevra, of, of using the, the mind, the seichel, the, the tools for seichel makes sense. <coughs> Excuse me. But the emotions, what do the emotions have to do with the garments? So the Alter Rebbe says, Ki ava his kol Ramach mitzvah asay, asay. Ava, love for God, is the source, is the shoresh for all positive commandments. And from there, from the love of God, they stem. And without it, it, they do not have an eternal and truthful Continuation. 
They're not everlasting. If you don't have the Ava Hashem, if you didn't develop that, then the mitzvahs are not necessarily going to be eternal. And this has been proven over and over and over. Only when you're in love with Hashem and you understand your love understands and feels that through mitzvahs, God says, this is the love between you and I. So you do more mitzvahs because you love him more. And at 85, you're still doing mitzvahs. Because that love, the mitzvahs are the love of God, and I love God. If you if you don't have Avas Hashem as the Shairish, but rather it's just an intellectual understanding, um, an emotional understanding, uh, a sentimental, it, it doesn't mean it's going to last. And it's been proven that it has doesn't last. Because the ways of the world are much stronger. The natural ways of the world that embraces an indul in indulgences and materialism is much stronger than love for God. Okay? So that's why Al Tareb says that when we talk about the Ava and the Yira, the Midos, the Midos are the uh, are the are the success tool to make my key, my machshava dibro maitza eternal. Continuing. Ki hamakaimon be'emes hu ha'oi v'shem Hashem. Now, Yonison, you see the Alter Rebbe adds a word, be'emes. He could have said, Chavre, ki hamakaimon hu ha'oi v'shem. The one who fulfills the mitzvahs loves God. He doesn't just say that. He adds the word be'emes. In other words, you have to be a seeker of truth. And if you're a seeker of truth, you go to the source. You don't, it's not adequate just to implement and do, speak and think and do. You need to get to the source for it to be continuous. That's why he says, Ki amakaimam be'emes, hu ha'eim Hashem. Only someone who really loves the name of God, God, and desires to cleave to God with truth, three times. Look at this. In every line, he repeats the word emes. Three times. The last three lines. For whoever fulfills, and it's impossible to cleave to God with truth, Rather, only through doing the six hundred and thirty, the two hundred and forty-eight mitzvahs of God, which correspond to the two hundred and fifty-forty-eight limbs of the King, Kaviyochel, and from more through speaking, Kamesh Gosel Mokamacha, as explained elsewhere. That's as far as Abba Hashem. Now he talks about Yiras Hashem of Rome, the fear and awe for God. Yira is the source, Shoresh, for the six three hundred and sixty-five negative commandments. Why? Because this causes him to be fearful of rebelling against God, the King of Kings. Oi, Yire Pnimi is Mizu. A deeper idea of fear of Yira is not fear, I'm scared, but rather Mashem is Boises, I spoke about this yesterday. He's embarrassed. He's embarrassed with God's greatness, meaning he sees himself, oh yeah, I'm so insignificant. Wow, what a busha that God made me, but yet this is my God. So this gives him a sense of reverence and respect. To, to re, not to rebel, and to do bad in his own eyes. Anything that is disgusting in God's eyes, which God hates. Haim, referring to the negative extraneous energy. Their nourishment comes from the lower man. We'll just 
leave it at that. Vachizosam boy, and they grab on to this nourishment that a Jew gives them when they violate this 365 mitzvahs. Who says that they're in 365 mitzvahs. So what does the Alter Rebbe say here? That whether it's the year of Shaloi Limbrei B'Melech Malchim O'Gashboruchu, I'm simply fearful to rebel against the king. I'm scared. He's the king. If I do something, I'm getting penalized. I'm getting punished. And maybe I'll be sent away, never see the light of day again. But that's more of an external fear. He says, a deeper fear is, to be awed by God's awesomeness, right? So that it brings a busha, a busha in the sense of a healthy, healthy embarrassment. Not, like I said yesterday, guilt and shame. No. A shamefulness that is respectful. And this is what we maybe would use the word reverence. Reverence for God. This is a greater feeling, says the Alter Rebbe here. These feelings of Yiras Hashem is the impetus for not giving, not violating any, any of the 365 negative commandments. Do not do this and do that and do. Because when you do violate them, you give food, nourishment to the negative forces which attack you and go against you, make you problems. So you don't want to give them that space. What, what, what is it that gets you to stay straight? Either fear of God, kipshute, literally speaking, I'm fearful, or I'm embarrassed to put God into the situation. You know, the Alter Rebbe later in chapter 46 in Tanya, he speaks about a certain meditation, which is very powerful. He speaks about, don't take God's head and put it, and put it into a, a, a seat of feces, of schmutz. God is with you. Hashem is with you. And when you do an Aveda, it's like you're pulling God's head, you're dumping it into the toilet. Very powerful. You look later, chapter 46. Pedic Memvov. So I'm saying the same idea. I don't want to give food to my enemy. Do you? Does anyone here want to give their enemy food to attack them? Absolutely not. Well, guess what? When we violate one of the 365 mitzvahs, we're giving food, nourishment, spiritual nourishment to clippers, to negativity. And it's harmful for, to us and to everyone. So why do you want to do that? But to have that feeling, now the Rebbe says, it requires Yiras Hashem. So Yiras Hashem, as we translate it loosely, and as we think of it loosely is, hey, I'm not going to do this and this sin, lo sese, lo sase, why, Avi? Because I fear God. Now, the Rebbe, before, when he speaks about Ava, he says three times, three or four times, the word Be'emes. When he speaks about Yira, you don't see him saying Emes, which needs a little thought. I don't have right now a clarity on that, but I noticed it now. Here I am, 62 years old, having learned Tanya many, many times, and this thing never came to mind. I, at least I don't remember. Could be it did, but I forgot. Why is it that when it comes to Ava, he mentions three or four times Be'emes? When it comes to Yira, he doesn't even mention once Be'emes. So we'll leave that for another time, hopefully. I'll try maybe Shabbos to speak to someone about it. But the kids are, we'll stop here, but the kids are, the Alter Rebbe leaves us right now at a point where he tells us that the instruments of the Neshama, the tools, i.e. thought, speech, and action, they are, they are what facilitate the, the, the nefesh, the faculties of the soul, seichel amidus. 
And he explained it, and all he was talking about from the Nefesh Elikir's perspective, from the godly soul's perspective. So that's why it's in Torah and Mitzvahs. Any questions? Okay. We'll see everyone in Mitzvah Shem tomorrow, bright and early. Have a great day. Shalom. Bye.